Okay, pay attention here. This is going to be the last video. Part 18 is describing both the locust, the kneesings, is the technique that they're using to achieve the illumination. The, the light doth shine is the luminous serpent that we saw perceived in the, in the scientific book. It says, and as seen or perceived as a luminous serpent. Now I want you to connect that to the birth of Noah and the book of Enoch describing himself as having, or his father describing him as having white hair and that his eyes were shining like the sun, which is giving you a clue that in the book of Enoch, which is telling you that the lineage of Noah is coming through the lineage of the Nodites, which I've revealed already in my video series entitled From Eve to Cain, From Cain to Nod. And it's going to show you where these Jews get their genetic connection to these fallen sons of God from Genesis 6. Now, guess what? Does that make Noah bad? And am I saying Noah's bad? No, it doesn't. Absolutely not. What it's telling you is that we have a peculiar history of genetic heritage on this world, which is stemming directly from the account of Genesis 6, where the sons of God have taken unto themselves the daughters of men. Where do you think that population went? Where do you think the population went when they had these children? Well, the Bible wants you to believe that, that this flood came and that all of these giants were supposedly destroyed. Well, that's not how it happens. And I don't have time to go into it. And you should know that's not how it happens because there's giants on the earth after the flood. And then if you want to believe that Noah and his family, eight of them, were the only ones that were saved after this event, you are mistaken. Okay, because you're not looking at history. But what I can tell you is that Noah was a real man and that Noah did build a boat. But the flood wasn't global, and you're going to absolutely think I'm insane. Well, just like many people have thought of insane with the stuff I've told you until now, I can prove it. I don't have time to do it now, but what I can tell you is that, yes, there was a flood, not global, and it was centered in a geographical singular location. And from Noah's point of view out, it seemed to be the whole world. But at the same time, the Jewish scribes used the flood story to connect their genealogies from Adam to Abraham and then from Abraham on to Jesus, because the whole point was they want to show that they were the chosen race. And if they really had revealed that there was all of these hundreds of thousands of years of generational lineage rather than the 6,000 years that Genesis wants to account for in the biblical narrative as it's interpreted by the false crystallized traditional view, then they would never have been able to write all of those genealogies between Adam, Abraham, and Jesus. You get it? They had to compile it in such a way that gave them a straight shot. And that's when you see Cain going to the land of Nod. And then you see the Cainite lineage is erased. You see Enoch comes from Cain. And then you see Enoch comes from the line of Seth. They're trying to erase it. If you want to learn more about that, watch the video series from Cain to Nod. and from, Or no, from Eve to Cain, Cain to Nod. All right, and then you'll learn. All right, nonetheless, verse 24 describes Heart Island of New York City. Google it, and that's where you're going to see in Revelation 11 that this place where the sacrifice is going to take place, where the bodies are going to be gathered, and where these eagles are going to be gathered after, is going to be Golgotha. Golgotha is city of the skulls, city of the dead. New York City has the largest city of the dead commercial cemetery on the face of the earth. It's called Heart Island. And then Revelation 18, verse 21 through 22 says that this millstone, which will be the sacrifice, is going to land off the coast of that great city. The great city is New York City, plain and simple. So now we see after the sacrifice takes place, he's able to raise himself up. The mighty are afraid. The mighty is us. That's what they want you to believe. We're the mighty. You hear me keep saying we are mighty? That's us. Okay? And then it says... The sword of him that layeth at him, that's going to tell you that they can't be hurt. Not only the locusts, but also the Antichrist. That they are unable to be hurt, that they're not going to be moved, and that you cannot turn them away. That they're going to stay in their path. And it says sharp stones are under him. What I tell you about the crystals? Think about sharp stones. Think about crystals. Watch that video by Florence and Machine Spectrum, and you're going to see the sharp crystals in her video depicting rising up out of the water. The sharp stones are telling you that after the sacrifice... That now he's coming out of the crystals. He's making the deep to boil. And it says he maketh a path to shine after him. The path is what they want you to follow. We're supposed to follow Jesus Christ. They want us to find follow this path. This illuminated one. And it says now on verse 33 as I told you. He is upon the earth. Well that's the Ouroboros. 11, 11, 11, 33. That's the year Jesus was crucified. 